Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2016 Advanced. In this section we're going to start to look at text functions but instead of going through the text functions one at a time and demonstrating what each of them does I'm going to turn everything on the head this time and do a very specific exercise using a range of text functions. I'm going to assume that you have used basic text functions so for example I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the use of concatenation either using the ampersand symbol or the concat function but some of the functions that I'm going to be using in this section will be some of the ones that you may well not have used before. Now the basis of the exercise that I'm going to do is that I've been given a long list of employee details and for each employee I've got five pieces of information and in a text file I've got about 20 employees information just as a sort of test sample and I'm going to see if I can use Excel text functions to basically tidy this data up and to reveal the structure in the data. I've opened the data here in Notepad and if you look at the very first row in Notepad there is an employee name which is Juarez Jose there is a number 41297 I believe that is the start date for the employee and in fact if you look at the next row Abraham Johnny you'll see there's a date there March 30th 2013 so it's probably a start date and carrying on with Jose's details the next figure is Jose's salary then what I believe is the department that Jose works in the admin department and then finally Jose's job title. Now those five pieces of information are separated by semicolons and what I want to do is to use text functions to split that data up for each employee and I want to finish up with the data for this test sample neatly structured in a workbook. Now one thing that is an obvious possibility here is that you could just say well why mess around with text functions why not just type it all in using this notepad file. As I said before this is basically a sample of about 20 people and let's assume I've got thousands of people and what I want to do is to put together a set of formulae and functions that will work as well as possible for the thousands of employees for whom I have this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is to close this text file and open it in Excel. Now when I open this text file in Excel one of the things that it does is to offer me the text import wizard and using the text import wizard I could say for example this is a delimited file so the semicolons are used as delimiters and I could get Excel to split the data up into the five constituent fields. Now under normal circumstances that may well be what I would do but on this occasion I'm really trying to demonstrate some of the more sophisticated text functions so I'm not going to do that on this occasion. What I'm going to do is to stick with the default setting there of delimited, click on next and I'm just going to stick with the default of tab delimiters. Now with tab delimiters as you can see it's going to treat the contents of each row as a single field within the row so in fact it's not going to split up each row at all for me. Now I realize of course that under normal circumstances you declare that semicolon is the delimiter and get Excel to start the work for you but on this occasion I really want you to show you how to use some more of these text functions. So let's click on next, there's my preview, just click on finish and what I finish up with is a new worksheet and all of the data is in column A. Note that row 1 is empty and that ultimately I will put the headings, the field names in effect for the data into row 1. Now in the early stages of working on this file what I'm going to do is to make one or two really quite deliberate mistakes. Now before we really get started on this, if you're not very familiar with text functions, take a moment to look at the Excel 2016 help and in the text functions category you'll see a list of the functions which of course includes the ones that we're going to use. And there are three functions to look at at the beginning. 
There is the lower function that converts text to lowercase, the upper function which converts text to uppercase, and the proper function which capitalizes the first letter in each word of a text value. Now it's the proper function that I'm going to demonstrate first here. And what I'm going to do in column B is to use the proper function. I'm going to say the value in B equals proper and the value in column A. Let's try one of those out. And what that does, as you can see, is to convert the text in column A into proper case. This won't always be successful, but Excel's actually pretty good at it. So as you can see here, Juarez Jose has become Juarez Jose, but with a capital J on the family name and the given name. And the department has been changed to admin, the job title intern, each with the word capitalized. Now assuming I'm happy with that, what I'm now going to do is to fill that down. So select to the bottom and use the Control D shortcut. And that formula has been filled down in column B. Now I'm going to make the first of those mistakes. And the first mistake I'm going to make is to say, oh, that's much better. Let's get rid of column A. So I'm going to delete column A. And of course, the consequence is that column B, as was, that's now column A, doesn't work anymore because the arguments in the functions that were in column B no longer exist. So one thing to bear in mind is that where you are doing an operation like this, make sure that you do not remove any data that you need. Now, of course, there is an alternative to this. If what I really wanted to do was to get rid of the old versions of this data as I go, one thing I could do instead is having done the conversions to proper case in column B, if I copy the content there to the clipboard, right click and do a paste values. Now of course if I delete A and B, delete both columns, then what's left is still fine because I've pasted the values in there. And you may think, oh that's a much better way of doing it, isn't it? Because I've now got my proper case but I haven't got a load of old redundant columns. The problem now is that if this is something you're doing as a one-off, that's fine. But if what you're trying to do is to work out a set of formulae and functions which you can use not on about 20 people but on 2,000 people and you're experimenting on a group of 20, you can't really lose the intermediate steps. What we really need to do here is to keep the columns as we work our way through all of the data and normally what I do in this situation is to hide the columns that I don't need as I go. Now very often people write VBA code and so on to do this sort of thing but on this occasion I'm going to stick with my original intention and say that we're using this as a test run and we're going to keep all our working as we go. So let me undo those deletions. I don't actually need column C and what I'm going to do is to hide column A. So what I have now in the new column B is the original data but in proper case. Now the next part of the job is going to be to start to split up the information about each employee. And the first thing I'm going to do is to separate the name from the rest of the information. The key to this separation is to locate the first semicolon character in the data in column B and to find a particular character in a text string we use the find function. So in C2 I'm going to put a formula equals find, it's the find function that I want and there are three arguments the third argument is the start number, the start position for the find. If I omit that, the find will start right at the beginning of the text string that I refer to. The text I'm going to be looking for is a semicolon character, which I put in double quotes. That's the first argument. 
The second argument is the within text. The text that I'm looking within and the text I'm looking in within is B2. So what I'm looking for is a semicolon in B2 and what I should get in C2 is the location of that semicolon. And what I'm told there is that it's the 14th character in the text string in B2. You can easily check that of course. The other thing I'm going to need to know is the total number of characters in B2. So I need to know the length of the string in B2 and the text function I use for that is the len function. So equals len and it's just the text string I want the length of which is B2. So the length of B2. Now what I want to do is to get the two separate parts of B2 into separate fields. I'm going to put the name in E2 and everything else in F2. So in E2 what I want is the string of characters up to the first semicolon. And to do that I look for the left part. Left is a function which operates on text and gives you the leftmost characters in a string. And I want left and it's the text I want the leftmost characters of and the number of characters. The text string I want to take the characters from is B2 and the number I want is not 14 in this case because that would include the semicolon. It's actually going to be 13. So that's the value in C2 minus 1 and subtracting 1 means that I'll eliminate or remove the semicolon itself. Tick that and I get Juarez Jose but without the semicolon. Now you may be able to guess what goes in F2 because there is also a write function. So again what text string am I looking at? I'm looking at B2 and how many characters do I want from the right of the text string in B2? Well it's the length of the whole string which is D2 minus the position of the semicolon, the first semicolon which is C2. So it's the right part of text string B2 and the number of characters I want is D2 minus C2. Let's see what I get and that's the balance of that string. And of course, if I fill that down, so don't forget the fill down option on the home tab, down and there we are. And if I look through all of those, I should see that that seems to have worked successfully in all cases. Now once you've completed that step, you may look at what's in column F and say, OK, well I can work on column F now and separate out the first field in column F in a similar kind of way. And in fact that's one of the things we're going to do in the next section. But I've got a couple of other things to explain right at the start of the next section about what we've done so far and about a couple of alternatives that you need to be aware of. So the final thing I'm going to do in this section is to save my work here as an Excel workbook. In fact when you're working on this kind of conversion not only is it a good idea to frequently save your work but you might even do things like take a copy of the worksheet, in this case the only worksheet, when you start, keep it within the workbook and then if everything goes horribly wrong you can go back to your starting point. Another important factor here of course is whether or not you're deleting columns as you go. Now in this case because we're not deleting the columns as we go it's always possible to backtrack quite a long way anyway if we need to. But don't forget keeping backups particularly if you're talking about long and complex operations. But I'm going to save this as a workbook now and I'll see you in the next section. Hi I'm Nigel from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching. If you need additional Microsoft Excel 2016 training, you can get our entire 60 course software training library for $1. This is a limited time offer that includes three individual Excel 2016 courses to help you master Microsoft Excel. Click the Learn More button on the right. 
I'll see you next week with additional videos.